class i told you how to analyze a language we analyze a language at different levels we analyze a language at the level of sounds which we did in the last three classes the consonants and the vowels right that is your block 3 and 3a then we analyze language at the level of words that is sounds combined together to make a word all right that is in morphology we study the structure of words i said words are formed by combining certain sounds but it is not that we can combine any sound with any other sound when we combine sounds then every language has its own rule for combining sounds like english has its own rules how to combine sounds to form a word hindi has its own rules how to combine sounds to form a word and similarly every other language has its own rule how to combine sounds to form a word for example let's take the three sounds k and t and a now if we want a word then we have to place k first then a and then t k a and t what word do you get you get a word like cat hmm. or if we change the order of these sounds like we put a first then k and then t then we get at fine so by changing the order of sounds we get two different words k first then a then t all right and then a first then k and then t now when we put a between k and t then we get cat and when we put a first then k and then t then we get at now if you compare compare these two words the sounds are the same k t and a but the order of placing those sounds is different in these two different words and for you again you change the order of sounds and you ch change the word okay presentation will be visible wait so this is what we study in morphology how to form a word by combining the sounds like take the word king and what sounds do you find in the word king k r e right k e and m mm, king all right there are three sounds in king k e and m mm, king now can you give me a word which begins with n now in king the sound m mm comes at the end of the word but can you give me a word which in english which begins with the sound m mm? no there is no word 
in English which begins with the sound in. Sir, sing. Why? What? Sing. King. Sing. S-I-N-G. S-I-N-G to sing. So where is in occur in sing? In the beginning, in the middle, or at the end? Hmm? In sing. It's in beginning, sir. At the middle, sir. It's in middle. What happens in sing? What are the sounds? Sir. Sir. E. In and go. Mm. Now don't go by spelling. Go by sounds. How many? Al. How many letters are there in sing? S I N G. There are four letters. All right. But how many sounds are there? Sir, E, and N. Sing. There are three letters. Sorry. There are three sounds when we speak. And there are four letters when we write the word sing. And that's why I said you have to keep the two systems separate. The spoken system and the written system. Excuse me, sir. Like, so, sir, then, yes. uh, sir uh, 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 in the word I N K, so there also the same method applies. Like, I I N K ink. So here the ink. start starting is in um sound. No, no, it ink starts with E. You can hear it. E. Mm -hmm. Okay, like yeah. this we yeah. have to uh, figure it out then. Yes. Okay, sir. Ink starts with E. So you can get N at the end or in the middle as an in ink. It is not E N K. It is E N K ink, as in uncle. It is not uncle. It is uncle a. Uh, N, K, and L, right? Now, I said you have to keep the two systems separate. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, can we relate the sound with syllables like uh, in the particular word? Uh, any as the syllable is the syllable is there, we can say the sound is also there in that uh, particular word. No, no, no. That's a different thing altogether. Syllable is a different matter. Okay, okay now that you have asked about syllable, mm -hmm. let me explain this. You know, uh, I have given you the basics of phonetics, that I have given you the basics of uh, block number three and three A. I did not take up all the topics. Hmm. You have to study on your own. How can how much can we do in just a span of six six classes? No, we can't do that. So you have to study on your own at home. But then to help you understand things, you need to know the basics and to understand the phonology and the phonetics of English, that is to understand block 3 and 3a, three you ought to know the consonants and the vowels in English. That is the foundation. Now, taking help of this foundation, taking help of what is a consonant, how many consonants are there, what are the consonants in English, and what are the vowels in English, Taking help of these two basic things, you can study the other topics, right? like syllable. Now, what is a syllable? Syllable is the sound of vowel. No, 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 just a minute. Let me tell you. When we speak, right, the air stream comes out of the lungs. Huh? The air stream comes out of the oral passage or the nasal passage, etc., etc., right? And the 
air stream does not come out in a stream in a continuous flow there is no continuous flow of the air stream it comes out in puffs like when you uh, when you uh, you see someone smoking he can throw out the smoke in puffs right you can see chunk of smoke huh? different chunks right similarly when you speak when you articulate a word then the air stream comes out in puffs one breath right like take the word river how many puffs or how many parts can you divide two sir ah. re re and va va right, right. Yes, although there are four sounds but then two sounds are articulated first in one stream and then the other two sounds are articulated next in the next stream re ah. in the first stream or in the first puff you get re and then v re and then the next puff is v river how many puffs are there in the word cat so one 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 yes one one, one sir but there are two puffs in river mm. yes and then how many puffs are there in morphine you know there are so many uh, letters you can see it in your presentation here there are so many letters in morphine but how many puffs are there more two 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 sir three just two two more fine yes now compare morphine the spelling of morphine and the spelling of river there are r i v e r there are five letters mm -hmm. but four sounds in river in morphine 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight letters are there but how many sounds are there more one uh, two sounds and fine three sounds f and e and m morphine so total there are five sounds in morphine but there are eight letters and that's why i said you have to keep the written system and the spoken system separate and the best way to keep it separate or keep the two separate is to learn the phonetic transcription of each word hmm. now i don't have the time nor do you have the time to study the phonetic transcription but in my first lecture i advised you to buy that uh, oxford advanced learners dictionary and you will get the phonetic transcription in that dictionary there is a i mean along with the text of the dictionary along with the book comes a uh, dvd also which you can upload in your computer hmm. now most of you have either a computer or a uh, either computer um, and a pc or a laptop so you can upload that in your uh, computer or your uh, laptop and then you can see those words when you click a word you will get an icon icon of a microphone if you click on the microphone then that word will be pronounced to you and in the entry of the dictionary you will get the phonetic transcription also however coming back to syllable because you have raised this uh problem let me explain it so what is a syllable a syllable is the 
part of the world right which is articulated in one puff of air stream right syllable if there are two puffs if a word can be articulated in two puffs then there are two syllables if there if the word can be articulated in three puffs then there are three syllables for example river ri va how many syllables are there two syllables right morphine how many syllables are there in morphine Two. Two. Yes. Two. So there are two syllables: mo and fi. And how many syllables are there in monotony? Three. Sir, four, sir. Four, sir. Two, two. Yes. Two. Ma, no, ta, ni. Ni. Monotony. Ma, no, ta, ni. So that is there are four syllables. to know how many syllables are there in a word every syllable will have a vowel there cannot be a syllable without a vowel so count the number of vowels you for transcribe the word phonetically phonetic transcription and see how many vowels are there and the number of vowels and the number of syllables would tally that is you will have as many syllables as there are vowels for example in river how many vowels are there two two e and two, a and yes e and v a so there are two vowels right <coughs> and then the concept of stress now that you have raised that point of syllable then let me tell you in very brief what is a stress you know the puff of air comes out hmm but all the puffs do not come out with equal force one of the puffs will come out with greater force than the other puffs like in river which puff comes out with greater force re or sir ha huh? उट river hmm yes river that is incorrect pronunciation yes. it is river we put greater force on re and less force on ver ver so re is a stressed force means a stress so re is a stressed and ver is not a stressed now i give you a word i will articulate a word and tell me where the stress lies on which syllable examination <coughs> so on nay sir nay nay yes yes sir nay you will hear the stress stress syllable with a louder sound like examination nay nay <coughs> so that is the concept of stress Ah, so when you study syllable, then you study stress also. Fine, <clears throat> but I wish I had the time to uh, tell you all these things in detail. But sorry. Thank you, sir. Mm. Uh, sir, may I ask a question about the vowels, please? Of course, yes. Oh, uh, so I'm Mansi. Okay. Uh, so from? if you can, Mansi? so uh, I'm from. Um, uh chandigarh sir are you speaking from chandigarh yes sir oh you have joined oh. this online class from chandigarh yes sir and where are you admitted what is your center study center 
study center is in Chandigarh only, sir. SD College Chandigarh. Okay, okay. So how did you get this information? Uh, sir, through the uh, through groups, uh, through the MEG groups. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, okay, sir. okay, okay, okay. I can understand. Nice. You are welcome. Hmm. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir, so I have a doubt related. Yes, yeah, sir. Sir, uh, I had a yes. doubt related to uh, a couple of vowel sounds. So when right. I was reading the phonetic transcriptions, I was uh, maybe it's because we are in the Indian pronunciation. It sounds almost the same. But if you look at the words like odd, caught, for us they sound very similar to. Art. No, no, Art. no, no. I, I will uh, pronounce it. <laughs> yes, okay. sir. If you can help me, sir, with this. Yes, sir. C O T. It is caught. Hmm? C O T is caught. It's caught. And C A U G H T is caught. I caught the ball. I didn't. You can't say I caught the ball. No. I slept on the cot. I slept on the cot. I lay on the cot. But I caught the ball. I bought a ball. I brought a book. Brought. Mm. But mm. caught mm. and caught. Right. Okay. So they're a little longer is what I understand. So am I right? Of course, yes. Or okay. is short okay. and or is long. I explained this in the very first or second right, class. Right, right, right. Right. Okay, 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 sir. Similarly, right, right. you'll find you'll find the difference of length. Ah, mm -hmm. we say it is a short yes, vowel sir. or a yes, long sir. vowel. In yes, seat, e is long, and in set, e is That's short. That's right. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. So similar difference between the words like scrub, and uh, if we if we uh, say about, polite, and up. about. Well, Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, no, it's about. Do, we don't say about. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll, I'll give you two more words. <clears throat> yes, sir. H-U-T. H-U-T, mm. it's hurt. And H-U-R-T, it's hurt. That's a clear uh, difference. So, yes, sir. Yes. Hurt and yes, hurt. Similarly, S-H-U-T. Shut and S H I R T shirt. Yeah, that's right, sir. Do you get sir, the my difference? doubt was yes, sir. My doubt was related to the sound which is made purely by the letter U in up or scrub versus the ones which are made by any vowel. In fact, uh, I have been uh, trained in Jolly Phonics, and in Jolly Phonics, we call that schwa sound. So the sounds like about or uh, in about or o oh, in polite or uh, maybe in color uh, o u r is making that short o uh, sound so uh, o, o u r is just a uh, o u r oh. color color right. color 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 right right and then la, la. la. color color uh, right schwa. sir right Schwa. In le, we use the schwa. In color, ka, we use the same sound, same vowel as in hat. Right, right sir. Okay. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you, so sir. Have Thank I you, you so much. Yes, okay. sir. This is really. Any helpful. other question? Thank you so much, sir. So far, so good, sir. I had some in uh, theta grade and all, <laughs> but that for that I'll wait for you to reach there. <laughs> Theta grid. Uh, yes, sir. Thematic Sorry, relations and theta. Said theta grid. That yes, sir. Syntax, syntax you're yes, talking? Sir. Yes, syntax. Sir. Oh. yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Theta grid. Theta grid. That is something else. I'm sorry, Nancy. <laughs> I mean, I don't have the time. Otherwise, yes, yes, I, would sir, have, uh, I would have loved to do that. Uh, theta <laughs> no grid problem, is about sir. the uh, how many arguments a verb or a predicate uh, can take. Yeah. Mm, you might have heard of this, but since yes, you have sir, asked I about tried. theta grid, <laughs> I, I, yes, sir, I tried reading in okay, the book, but it, maybe I not... found it a little difficult. <laughs> yeah, it is difficult. It is very difficult because it is quite advanced, and in the book, it has not been explained so nicely. I'm sorry to say that, 
but some of the blocks are very frustrating. Mm. They don't explain so how things rightfully properly. You said. <laughs> Sorry, how rightfully you spoke that. And you will find it more uh, prominent in uh, MEG2. They, they, give, they give the blocks like formula and you have to apply those formula on uh, your text. They don't explain certain things. Okay, let's not go into the evaluation of the blocks. Let's deal with whatever we have. Hmm. Now let's come to Morphe. Now, I have answered your question on syllables. Someone asked about syllables. So I hope uh, you have understood syllable and stressed syllable, right? Yes, sir. And that is very important. If you want to sound like, I mean, if you want to sound, um, if you want your speech to sound like English, then you must learn not only the correct, correct sounds, but also the correct stress. Like in Indian English, many people, I've heard many people uh, articulating the word monotony as monotony. Mm. And it is not monotony, it's monotony. The stress is on. Can you tell me where the stress lies in monotony? In no. No, yes. yes. And in no, you get that short vowel as you get in caught. Monotony. Okay. It's ma, shwa, ma is followed, the sound m mm is followed by shwa, then m, mm, and then the o oh, as in cot, and then t, and then shwa, and then na, and then e, the short e. So it, it is monotony. Mm. I work. So I was now, now let's switch over to morphine. Mm. The 24 consonants and the 20 vowels that I gave you are called phonemes. Hmm. Phonemes are the sounds of English. So we can say that there are 44 phonemes in English, out of which 24 phonemes are consonants and 20 phonemes are vowels. So, we combine phonemes or we combine sounds to make a word. And I told you, the combination of a word is ruled by, uh, sorry, the combination of sounds is ruled by the rules of that language. It's a rule-governed phenomenon. You can't just take two or three sounds and put them together and get a word. Like mm and m and p. What sounds, uh, what word can you get out of these three words? I mean, out of these three sounds? Nothing. Now, so, morphine relates to words. That is, that is, each word can be a single morpheme or a combination of morphemes. Like what is a morpheme? You can see it here in the presentation. The definition of a morpheme is that it is the minimal meaningful unit in the grammatical system of a language. Minimal, meaningful. These are in uh, uh, black. I mean, uh, I have highlighted them. Minimal, these three words are important. Minimal, meaningful, and grammatical. Now, what is grammatical system? The grammatical system relates to the rules, the grammatical rules of that particular language. For example, in English grammar, words are divided into eight parts of speech, right? Noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, adverb, etc., etc. So these are grammatical categories. Noun is a grammatical category. 
verb is a grammatical category adjective is a grammatical category so that is the grammatical system or if you go higher like uh, at the level of sentences then the grammatical system of english divides sentences into declarative sentences interrogative sentences imperative sentences exclamatory sentences right if you have read your ran and martin properly please unmute yourself arthi please unmute yourself yes now so that is the grammatical system or placing the words to get a sentence putting two or three words together to get a sentence that is the grammatical system we cannot put words as we like we have to follow certain rules for example i read a novel hmm? i read a novel now how many parts are there in this sentence i then read and then a novel i is the subject red is the verb and a novel is the object right so what is the grammatical system of english sent sorry english sentences the subject comes first followed by verb followed by object subject verb object s v o right compare this with hindi main kitab padhta hu main kitab padhta hu main is the subject kitab is the object and padhta hu is the verb right so hindi is an sov language as someone has written hindi is an sov language whereas english is svo language that is the grammatical system that is you get rules at the level of words at the level of sentences etc etc now morpheme belongs to the grammatical system how let's take okay now let's take these two words boys and younger boys now we say or if we want to divide boys into shorter units then we can say boy and z boy or plus s boy is the word and then we add s to it we pronounce it as boy and then Z. Now, can you break boy any further? If you break boy into b and o, then you don't get a word. B is a sound, o is a sound. But when only these two sounds are put together, you get a word boy. Now, boy cannot be broken further. but boys can be broken at least into two units boy and z so boy cannot be broken further therefore this is minimal the smallest unit minimal unit in the grammatical system so boy is minimal and z is minimal then it has to be meaningful what is the mean what is meaningful boy has a meaning there is a meaning of this word boy and z also has a meaning what is the meaning of z more than one boy means one boy and boys means more than one boy fine similarly take younger don't go out to the spelling look at the phonetic transcription that i have given young plus 
a now you cannot break a it is already minimal you cannot break it further and young is also minimal in the sense that if you break young further then you don't get any meaning you don't get any meaning of year and mm. Mm in itself does not have any meaning it is simply a sound year and a uh, together do not have any meaning it's simply a combination of two sounds only when these three sounds are put together here and a uh, and mm, then we get a meaningful word so this is minimal young is minimal right and young is meaningful you know the meaning of young but a uh, also has a meaning younger a uh, what is the meaning of a uh? he is young but she is younger younger means she is more than young right she is more than young he is bright she is brighter that is um in brighter means more than bright so that is a morpheme in boys we have got two morphemes boy and za in younger we have got two morphemes ya and a uh. and these two morphemes have a meaning boy has a meaning za has a meaning young has a meaning a uh has a meaning and they belong to the grammatical system of english language what is the grammatical category of boy any one of you what is the grammatical it's category of boy it's a common noun it's a noun it's a noun about common it's a noun right yes it's a noun boy and za za is plural and this also belongs to noun because a plural can be added to a noun only therefore it is a noun so the grammatical category of za is noun okay now what is the grammatical category of yan adjective adjective it's an adjective and younger is more than yan uh, also adjective because a uh, uh, can be added only to an adjective and therefore a uh, is also an adjective so any doubt about morpheme the definition a morpheme is the minimal meaningful unit in the grammatical system of a language did you understand the concept of morpheme Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Anyone has a doubt? Uh, sir, does the same rule apply to the words which act as adjectives as well as adverbs, depending on the sentence in which they are used? You are talking of er. Ah, uh, so some of the words uh, can be used as adjectives as well as adverbs. For example, ah. Uh, he read the book nicely mm -hmm. uh, in her it's an adverb okay it's describing how he's read it and uh, uh, i can't think <laughs> like top of my mind it's not coming but uh, yes so uh, look here, look maybe here. a nice book tell take yes, take the word nicely hmm. so elva is definitely an adverb uh, but other than those uh, some adverbs which do not look, take elva yes an sir adjective an adjective can be converted into an adverb that is conversion hmm. you might have read it in morphology that uh, uh, block oh, yes, sir, yes sir yes sir yes sir <laughs> yes yeah. yes sir got that so <laughs> you can add li to an adjective to convert that into an adverb for example nice is an adjective add li to that add li the morpheme it's a morpheme li ah it's an adverb morpheme add this to 
an adjective and what you get is nicely an adverb slow is an adjective add link to it and you get an adverb slowly and there are so many other words right two examples come to my mind right now hmm. so uh, but, uh, uh is yes. there a word like fastly if i say no. he runs fast no he runs fast and he runs fast that's all there is no word like fastly you cannot so add say, leap to all the adjectives right sir so if i say he is a fast runner or he runs fast in one case uh, no. he it's an adjective in the other case in it's one an adverb. case fast is an adverb in another case it is an adverb adjective and adverb he runs fast hmm. he right, runs sir. fast it's an adverb it is an adjective Mm. And he is very fast. He is very fast. Then fast is an adjective. Yes, sir. Got that. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. fast is also a morpheme. Nice is a morpheme, and li is a morpheme. And then uh, fast is a morpheme, adjective morpheme, and fast. is an adverb also that is we had forget about zero morpheme ah, i don't want to confuse you anymore right so if the concept of morpheme is clear to you i'll proceed further any other question no sir all clear okay so i hope you have understood the meaning of or the concept of morpheme that is each word is a morpheme or each word is a combination of more morphemes for example boy in itself is a morpheme which consists of only one morpheme but boys has got two morphemes boy and z young is a morpheme a single morpheme but younger has got two morphemes young and a uh. and you can have more than one morpheme you can have two or three like miss manage hmm miss manage how many morphemes are there in miss manage so i think three what are those three morphemes in uh, miss is one hmm? man and age <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> it no, may no, be just two a, just a minute man and age man hmm. is manage does not come from man and age manage yes. is single morpheme hmm. yes manage is single morpheme so there hmm. are only two morphemes hmm there are only two morphemes in mismanage but mismanagement mismanagement how many morphemes are there mismanagement three three and what are they manage and meant yes mismanage meant these are three morphemes like uh, disorderly disorderly sir you said that uh, we have to count with the vowel sound with the vowel now you are confused i was talking about uh, when i talked about vowel sounds i talked about syllable okay sorry I'm talking of morpheme okay. now don't confuse syllable with morpheme you get my point yes sir ha huh. now how many uh, what which word did i ask disorderly right how many morphemes are there in disorderly three three, three. and three. what are they disorderly yes this order Lee, now can you add any other morpheme to that? 
Think of that. Can you add one more morphine to disorderly? Sir, less disorderliness or what? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> disorderliness. You can add one okay. more, more morphine. So, how many morphemes are there in disorderliness? Four. Four, sir. Four. 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 So, now you have got it. You have got it. Disorderly is an adverb. Disorderliness is, that more is a noun. Okay. That's why we say, yes, there, there, that's why we say it belongs to the grammatical system of the language. You can see you add a morphine and the grammatical category of the word will change. Hmm. Like boy. Boy is noun. Add ish to it. You get boyish or girlish. Hmm. Boy is a noun, but when you add ish to it, then what is the grammatical category of boyish? Adjective. Adjective. You can say this man is quite boyish, or this woman, this grown up woman is quite girlish, right? Girlish is adjective, but girl is a noun. So by adding a morphine to another morphine, you can change the grammatical category of that word. So that is that's why we say a morphine belongs to the grammatical system of a language. Is the concept of morphine clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think it should be by now. Mm. Okay. So now, morphemes are classified into two categories. Free morpheme and bound morpheme. So there are two types of morphemes. Free morpheme and bound morpheme. And free morpheme means what? It can occur independently in a sentence like he is a boy hmm. he is a boy boy can occur independently in a sentence and they are boys okay but you can't, can't say he is or they are the hmm. in boys you get two morphemes boy and the I'm talking of the sound. I'm not talking of uh, the spelling. Hmm. You can take the spelling system. You can take the written system. B O Y plus S. All right. Boy is a morphine. S is also a morphine. Fine. Now we can say he is a boy, but can we say he is a he is an S? S cannot occur independently, separately in a sentence. Like you can say she is young, but can you say she is a? No, a cannot occur independently in a sentence, but young can occur independently in a sentence. Right? Young is a morpheme. It can occur independently in a sentence and therefore it is a free morphine. A is a morphine but cannot occur independently in a sentence. We cannot say she is a. This, uh, this morphine has to be added to a free morphine. And a morphine that is added to a free morphine is called bound morphine and a morphine that cannot occur independently in a sentence but it has to be added to a word to occur in a sentence is called a bound morphine. Free morphine, he is a boy, he is young but you can't say he is S or he is a. Hmm. So this is wrong and a star, I have given a star before he is S. The star does not have any good meaning here. The star means ungrammatical. Mm. So he is S is ungrammatical. He is ER is ungrammatical. But he is a boy. He is young. These are grammatical sentences. Is that clear? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Now, uh, think over it and give me just two minutes. Huh? I'll be back. There is someone. I am alone at home, and someone is uh, ringing the bell. Let me see. Okay. I'll, I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, sir. Yeah, sorry for the interruption. So, did you understand free morphine and bound morphine? A free morphine can occur independently in a, uh, in a sentence, whereas a bound morphine cannot occur independently in a sentence. A bound morphine has to be added to a free morphine or a word. Hmm. Okay, now... The next concept is next slide dikhana. Hmm. Now, bound morphine. Uh, can you hear me? Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes sir. Now, see. Yes sir. See, uh, so I have divided the morphemes into free morpheme and bound morphemes. The concept should be clear. Now let's come to bound morpheme. Hmm. Bound morphemes can be 
an inflection morpheme or a derivational morpheme inflectional morpheme or a derivational morpheme let's look at these two concepts in some detail samjhe next slide dikha nahi 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 ye nahi hai slide number 3 jamshed स्लाइड नंबर थ्री होगा ये तो स्लाइड नंबर फोर दिखा दिए स्लाइड नंबर थ्री यही दिख रहा है देखना इसको अभी जो स्लाइड दिखाया तो उसके बाद वाला स्लाइड दिखाओ फिर यस ठीक है यही यही चाहिए हाँ ओके हाँ ठीक है इसी को रखो लेट्स लुक एट दीज टू सेंटेंसेस ही इज गो टू द मार्केट नाउ और ही गो टू द मार्केट एवरी डे यू विल से दैट दीज टू सेंटेंसेस आर रॉन्ग फाइन he is go to the market now he go to the market every day you will say these two sentences are wrong i agree but do you understand the meaning of the sentence he is go to the market now do you understand the meaning of the sentence or not yes sir yes sir yes if sir I, yes sir if i say wrong if i forget my english and i say he is go to the market now you understand it and you will correct it and you will say that no this should be he is going to the market now suppose you are teaching and a student say ma'am miss he is go to the market now you will say no it is he is going to the market now the child says he go to the market every day you will say no he goes to the market every day. what i am trying to tell you that you understand he is go to the market now you understand what the child is trying to say you when the child says he go to the market every day you understand it but you find it ungrammatical and therefore you correct it you correct he is go to the market now by adding ing to go he is going to the market now you tell me why do we need ing on go just to make the meaning clear or to make the sentence grammatical do to make the sentence to make the sentence, sentence grammatic yes when i say he is go to the market now you understand it but you say sir this is ungrammatical you should learn your english well right so please add ing to go so he is going to the market now so ing is needed on go not for clarifying the meaning of the sentence but for making the sentence grammatical similarly he go to the market every day what's wrong in this you understand the sentence you will say yes i understand the sentence but i can understand the meaning of the sentence but the sentence is not grammatical you should add es to go and then it becomes grammatical so now you tell me do we need ing on go and es on go to make the meaning clear or to make the sentence grammatical to make the sentence grammatical to make the sentence grammatical not to make the sentence uh meaningful the sentence is meaningful but it may not have it may not be grammatical hmm? so remember this a sentence may be meaningful 
but it may be ungrammatical. To make that sentence grammatical, we have to add a morpheme to go. ing is a morpheme and es is also a morpheme. So look here. When we add a morpheme to another morpheme, a free morpheme, to make the sentence grammatical, then that morpheme is called inflectional morpheme. An inflection, an inflection morpheme is needed for making the sentence grammatical. This will be clear when we come to the concept of derivation morpheme. Look at this one. He is 30. All right. He is 30. What is the meaning of he is 30? Any one of you? So his age is 30. He is, 30. He is his age is 30. Now, can 30 mean 29 or 31? No, sir. No. No, no sir. When I say he is 30, means he is 30. He is not 29 and he is not 20, 31. All right? But look at the next sentence. He is 30 ish. I have added ish to 30 ish, to 30. ISH has been added to 30. Now, what is the meaning of 30-ish? Means you Possibly will look like of 29 30. or 31. That is, he is near about 30. 30. 30. Right. Which means that he may be 28, 29, or he may be 31, 32. Now, uh, a boy or a girl of 30, I mean 28, 29, or 31 and 32 will look like 30, or maybe younger. But... 30 share means he's about 30, near about 30. He may be 29, 28, or he may be 31 or 32. What we want to say in 30-ish is that he is somewhere around or somewhere near 30. Now you tell me, is ISH needed for Making the sentence he is 30 grammatical or extending no, the sir. meaning? Meaningful. So extending the meaning. Extending the meaning of 30. All right. So ISH is needed on 30 to extend the meaning of 30. All right. Extend the meaning or expand the meaning of that word. 30. 30. Whereas ES or ING on go are needed to make the sentence grammatical. ING and ES. These are also more, these are morphemes. ISH is also a morpheme. But we need ING on go to make the sentence grammatical and we need ISH on 30 to make the Meaningful. To expand the meaning of 30. All right. So there is a difference between ING and ISH. The function is different. ING makes a sentence grammatical. ISH expands the meaning of a sentence or expands the meaning of a word. So a morpheme which is needed on a word to make the sentence grammatical is called an inflectional morpheme. And a morpheme that is needed on a word to expand or extend the meaning of the sentence or the word is called derivational morpheme. Like, take a word like manage and add an inflectional morpheme on manage and add a derivation morpheme to manage. Can someone do this? Manage. Yeah, one is managing. Manage. Uh, is managed. Yeah, is managing. Other is managed. Manageable. Manage. No. Sir, management. Manage. Look, look here. Just, just that's interesting. Manageable. Manage means you are going to the past. 
he managed the work yesterday he managed the work yesterday all right you understand the meaning but you'll say this is ungrammatical add ed to it so he managed the work yesterday i am asking you managing ing is a, an inflectional morpheme add a derivational morpheme to manage uh, mismanage sir mismanage okay mismanage is okay management meant is okay Manager. that is a de derivational morpheme mismanagement miss is a derivational morpheme meant is also a derivational morpheme but manages s is a, an inflection so manageable morpheme. manageable is a derivational morpheme you are extending the meaning of manage so manager managing 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 i is a is an inflection morpheme i am manage the work fine i manage the work efficiently is it right i am no, manage sir. the work efficiently it's sir, not grammatical you understand not, the sentence yes, sir, but it's not grammatical to make it grammatical you have to add ing so i am managing this work efficiently so ing is a is an inflection morpheme but my management of the work is efficient hmm. my management of the work is efficient meant is a derivational morpheme another way to recognize is that an inflection morpheme does not change the grammatical category of a word go is a verb goes is also a verb go is a verb going is also a verb <clears throat> but managing manage is a verb managing is also a verb but manage is a verb add meant to it management becomes a noun so a derivation morpheme may change the grammatical category of a word so you find two differences at least two differences between an inflection morpheme and derivation morpheme an inflection morpheme is needed on a word to make the sentence grammatical whereas a derivation morpheme is needed on a word to extend the meaning of that word expand the meaning of that word all right that is a derivation morpheme an inflection morpheme does not change the grammatical category of the word go is verb goes is also a verb whereas a derivation morpheme may change may it's not necessary that it will but a derivation morpheme may change the grammatical category of a word all right hmm. so yes. he is 30 uh so let's take uh, another example manage is a verb i manage the work or he manages the work well es or s is a is an inflection morpheme but his management of the work is good hmm. his management of the work is good now management manages a verb add meant to it and it becomes a noun so a derivation morpheme may it may change the grammatical category of a word right so a derivation the the basic function or the basic difference between a uh, an inflection morpheme and derivation morpheme is this that an inflection morpheme is needed to make the sentence grammatical a derivation morpheme is needed to extend the meaning of the sentence or the word is that clear 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now you. Do you have any doubt? No, sir. No, sir. Anyone who has any doubt, I I will clarify it because if I proceed further, you will not understand. It's almost like mathematics. To understand the next step, you have to understand the earlier step. Okay, I saw in the message box unmanaged. Hmm. Unmanaged is not a uh, right word. It is mismanaged, not unmanaged. You don't unmanage this a work. You can mismanage. Hmm. But a work may be unmanageable. All right, a work or a job may be unmanageable, not mismanageable. <laughs> you understand? Okay. Anything else that you need me to clarify? Thank you so much, sir. Oh, uh, someone says I have doubt in filling the blanks. Give me the blank, I will fill it. Sir, just a minute. Okay. Someone is. Yeah, I saw a message there. I am from Delhi. Yes, sir, me too. Who is from Delhi? Yes, sir, me. Shafat. Many of you. Shafat from Delhi. Who is from Delhi? Me, sir, Shafat. Shafak. Shafat, sir. Okay, okay. Sir, may I? Yes. Okay. Uh, a consonant during the articulation of which there is no velic opening or the oral cavity is closed, then it is called a dash consonant. So it is. Uh -huh. It would be bilabial or voiceless. Oral cavity is closed. Yes, oral cavity is closed. Okay, if oral cavity is closed, then how will the air pass from where? Nose. Nasal passage. Nasal so that passage. So that consonant is nasal. Okay. No voice less or bilabial. Now, if the oral cavity, if the oral passage is closed, then another passage has to be open. Otherwise, you will not be speaking. You will be keeping quiet. If if the air stream does not escape, either through the oral passage or through the nasal passage. Then so how will you speak? It has to escape. So if the oral passage or the oral cavity is closed, then the air stream has to pass through the nasal passage. And therefore it will be a nasal, nasal sound. But yeah, nasal consonant. But look, a vowel hmm, can be an oral vowel. Hmm. Or a nasalized vowel. Can you understand this? What is a nasalized vowel? A, E, O, these are all oral vowels. That is the air stream escapes through the oral passage. But in French, I forget about French. In Hindi, hmm, we have A. Hmm, Like, I want to give you two words, which which is, which are coming to my mind right now. Sas, mother-in-law. In Hindi, we call her Sas, right? Ah, ah. But in ah, what happens? The air stream escapes only through the oral passage. 
but in a a the air stream escapes through the oral passage and the nasal passage at the same time and if you nas this is called a nasalized vowel and if you nasalize a in sas you get get sas sas and sas is breath in french this is more prominent fiance fi fi o we say o fi o say right what indian people call fiance or something like that fiance so that should be clear now any other question so sir uh, the answer will be nasal consonant yes nasal consonant like ma n and ma na and n these are nasal consonants okay look at the chart the chart that you have in your book okay sir and okay. one more ah yes so sir in this case uh, a consonant during the articulation of which the vocal cords vibrate so that will be voice consonant na voice consonant yes vocal cords vibrate then the consonant is voiced vocal cords do not vibrate the consonant is voiceless and remember only a consonant can be a voiced or voiceless a vowel is always voiced that is during the articulation of a vowel the vocal cords always vibrate then in this question it is asking about consonant only so how like it should be voiceless then yes uh, give me the sentence again a consonant during the articulation of which there is no velic opening or the oral cavity is closed then it is called a dash consonant there is no veiling open velic opening yes and the oral cavity is closed yes oh, this is this is no veiling opening no. there is there is not and there is or no veiling opening or the over, oral cavity is closed there is no veiling opening or the oral cavity is closed. closed yes then which is this consonant there is no uh, there is no velic opening what kind of question is this so, from, given in from, the assignment from where did sir, you get the question sir sir given in the assignment given in the assignment sir this assignment yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. can you can you give me a uh, the copy of that assignment can you send it on my whatsapp sir, yes sir yes sir number? sure sir so please share your number please sir yeah it's 943 94 again let let write hmm 943 triple 1 943 triple 1 2365 9 triple one sir once again please 943 triple one okay 2365 thank you sir 65 thank you sir send that send that uh, uh, sir now i'm sending it to you yes uh, sir fill I'll, in the blanks are very tricky discuss this i will take up tomorrow i'll take up just a minute i'll take a difference between inflectional deriv derivational morphemes in detail tomorrow as well as this question hmm, the whole of thing you have to fill in the blanks right yes sir there okay, are 10 so blanks hmm, 10 sentences yes okay fine i'll take up that's interesting thank you sir thank you so much okay thank you so today let's call it a day we come to an end tomorrow will be our fifth day let me see how much i can complete in two more days 
Okay then. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, you explained very well. Thank you. <laughs> so okay, yes, that's sir. my job. Yes, sir. Actually, sir, excuse me, sir. Hmm. Sir, it's sweetie here. Ah, yes, sweetie. Uh, sir, because uh, the class schedule had come, which was showing the timing 11 to 12.30, I missed uh, like three classes. The day before yesterday and the other classes. Today only I came to know that we are having the classes in the evening. No, so, day before, yesterday we had this in the evening. Evening only, I guess. But I did days. not get the information, sir, about this. Today, ah, for two days we had a class in the morning from 11 to 12.30. 12 yes, sir. The schedule was showing that only. Yes. The schedule which we got. I am from Karim City. I, I gave that schedule, but yes, then sir. because the evening doesn't suit me, but uh, there was pressure that most of you are working. Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm. So you are free only in the evening. So I changed it. Hmm. So tomorrow's timing will be the same, seven to eight thirty. Okay. Okay then. Okay, so thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Ajam Shade. Bolie. Thik hai. Aaj aaj ka ho gaya. So. Log out. Thank you, log. sir. Take a time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you.